in this lecture let us discuss about decomposition techniques we already know what is meant by software project estimation right so usually in software uh, while developing a software project we can't solve that complete problem in a single piece because usually the software problems are quite complex so here we are taking this decomposition techniques in order to make the process easy so decomposition technique is nothing but a strategy used in software development and project management to break down complex and problems complex systems or problems into smaller more manageable parts this approach facilitates understanding estimation and implementation so software sizing so when addressing the sizing problem in software decomposition several approaches can be considered here first is fuzzy logic sizing so fuzzy logic sizing is an approach that applies fuzzy logic principles to address the inherent uncertainty and vagueness in estimating the software sizes then coming to the second one that is function point sizing this is a standardized method used to measure the size and complexity of software based on its functionality from the user's perspective third one is standard component sizing which refers to the practice of using predefined metrics and criteria to measure the size of the software components consistently across projects this approach helps in estimating effort size cost and resources required for software development and the last one is chain sizing which refers to the process of estimating the size and impact of modifications to existing software systems it is critical for effective change management resource allocation and project planning then what is this problem based estimation it is nothing but a technique which is used in software development to estimate effort time and resources based on specific problems or requirements that needs to be addressed this approach is particularly useful in environments with high uncertainty or when dealing with complex features here uh, this lines of code and function point data they are used in two ways during the project estimation so they can be used as an estimate variable to size each element of the software so uh, to find out the length of the software and they can even be used as a baseline matrix collected from the past project and they can be used in conjunction with estimation variables to develop both the cost and effort projections so here if you take an example for this loc based estimation so loc can be considered as lines of code so loc is nothing but lines of code and this loc based uh, estimation is a method for estimating effort time and cost of software project based on number of lines of code so based on the total number of lines of code for writing the software or in the project will estimate effort time and cost of the project by using this let us take one scenario for example a company is developing a web application with several modules including user authentication then data management and reporting so they assume that these are the three modules now the task is the team uh, it is estimating that the project will consist of total 1000 lines of code so we need now our task is to find out loc based estimation for this so step 1 is determine loc count here so here uh, we are just uh, breaking down down the code for each module based on the similar past projects or breaking down the functionality so we have three modules right so for in every module we are finding out total number of lines of code so in user estimation assume that it is 2500 loc for data management 4000 loc and for reporting module 3500 loc now find out the total so total it is approximately 10000 loc the project it is uh, we are estimating that it takes 10000 lines of code right so based on this part we are assuming that every module contains these many number of lines of code now step 2 is define the productivity rate so here 
based on the historical data we need to establish or define this productivity rate so this rate it varies by team as well as the technology which we are using for developing the software or for writing the number of lines of code so here we need to measure lines of code per person month is meant by person month person month is a unit of measurement representing amount of work one person can complete in one month right say for example effort of 50 person months means if one person were to work on the full time project it would take them 50 months to complete it so let us take this third step uh, you will understand it better and calculate the effort so effort can be calculated in person months by dividing the total loc by productivity rate here we are calculating the effort by dividing total loc so total loc is 10000 lines of code and divided by productivity rate so we are taking the productivity rate as 200 loc per person month which indicates that for each person working full time for one month they are expected to produce approximately 200 lines of code single person if he is working for a complete month then we are estimating that this single person can produce 200 lines of code right so now we got the uh, effort value as 50 person months what this 50 person months represent it indicates that single person he is working on the full time project and it will take 50 months to complete that work step 4 is to estimate the time so here ravi calculated the effort next step is estimate time for completion of the work say for example uh, we are taking the team size so if the project will be worked on by a team of 5 developers assume that instead of taking one person we are taking five developers then estimated time in month can be identified by using the formula effort divided by team size so what is effort which we got it is 50 person months so divide that by total number of developers is 5 so it is 10 months so if the same work is done by five developers then they can complete the task in 10 months if it is done by a single person he'll complete it in 50 months right yes next step 5 is cost estimation say for example if each developer costs the company 10000 dollars per month total cost can be calculated by multiplying estimated time with team size and cost per developer so for one developer the cost required is 10000 per month or uh, say suppose the company is paying 10000 per month so here estimated time we got it as 10 month and total number of developers are 5 and team uh, cost per developer is 10000 dollars here total cost is 500 thousand dollars let us move on to the second one that is the uh, fp based estimation so here function point analysis we already know this so you can uh, refer uh, this topic in my previous uh, lectures so they are explained in detail about this function point metric so function point analysis it is again a technique which is used to estimate the size of the software based on the functionality so that will be considered from users perspective and here will uh, classify the function types like this so one we have the external input uh, external outputs then user inquiries internal logical files and uh, external interface files these are the values given for every parameter and assume that the value which we got after multiplying all these things is 320 so this is a final estimate and uh, these are the 14 factors which we considered so as we saw this uh, in our previous videos here you can just use the formula count total and uh, this is a standard formula which we use for function point estimation next one is process based estimation it mainly focus on the methodologies and the practices that were used during software development so in order to predict effort time and resources required for a project so this is another kind of estimation and uh, let us take one example mobile banking application 
here our goal is to develop a mobile application that allows users to manage their bank accounts transfer funds pay bills and view transaction history so assume that we are taking four modules here so the step one is define the development process here we are using agile development process which includes all these phases requirement gathering design development testing deployment review and retrospective and so here we are starting the estimation so first we are estimating the effort so as we have total six six activities let us uh, take the effort for every activity so requirement gathering it is two person weeks person weeks again it's a, a measurement used to estimate the amount of work required for a project just similar to person months but uh, it refers to amount of work that one person can complete in one week instead of one month and here again design three person weeks development 10 person weeks testing four person weeks deployment one person week review and retrospective one person per week so let us just add all these values in order to get the total effort. So we got the total effort as 21 person weeks. It indicates that single person is working for 21 weeks. Next consider team size. So again we are assuming that we have a team of 5 developers along with project manager and QA tester. So let us uh, estimate the time here. So estimated time, it is again same formula, total effort divided by team size. Total effort is 21 person weeks and total team size is 5 developers. So here, what this indicates, 5 people working full time for 4.2 weeks. Then risk assessment and contingency. So here in, uh, we, we may face some risks also, right? Changes in regulations uh, that impact the banking operation and we may have some technical challenges also. So in order to uh, resolve these uh, risks, uh, here we'll add 20% contingency to the estimated time. So estimated time is 5 weeks. Uh, 4.2 weeks means we are taking uh, round value as 5 and 20% contingency that is 0 0.20. So we got the value contingency calculation as one week. So here contingency uh, involves estimating and adding a buffer to the project budget timelines or resources to account for potential risks and uncertainty. Then final estimate, it can be calculated by adding estimated time with contingency. So estimated time is five weeks and the buffer time which is added to this is one week. So it is total uh, estimated time is six weeks. So this contingency one week, uh, it actually uh, helps mitigate the risks and ensure that project remain on track despite uncertainties. So properly calculated and monitored, uh, it can provide the flexibility needed to handle unexpected challenges while maintaining project integrity. Then estimation with the use cases, so another type of estimation. So we have seen various estimates, right? So product-based estimation, process estimation, function point estimation, and we are taking a use case estimation as well. So estimating the software projects using use cases, so it mainly involves analyzing the functionalities of a system. So based on how the user is interacting with the system, we need to uh, analyze the functionalities. And here use cases, they help to define the scope of the project and also they provide clear basis for estimating. Again, uh, here also we are estimating effort, time and resources required for completion of the project by with the help of use cases. So let us take one scenario. Here the goal is to develop an online shopping system where users can browse products, add items to their cart and complete purchases. So, so total we have three modules. And the steps for estimation, first you need to identify the use cases. So here, uh, you can take some examples like this. User estimation is one use case, right? So where uh, the description is users, they can create a new account and actors are nothing but the users. What is the precondition? User must provide your valid email address for registration, right? Post condition, 
uh, say if we if we provide the valid email address, then user account will be created. And then product browsing, another use case. So users can browse products based on category. Again, actor involved in this is user who will uh, browse the product. Again, user, right? So precondition, in order to browse the products, first user should be logged in or as a guest, he can do that. And the post condition, so once he is uh, successful in logging, then users can uh, view list of products. And the third use case is add to cart. So there is nothing but users can add products to their shopping cart. And again, who will involve in this task? User. Preconditions. First, in order to add the product to the cart, user should select the product. And post condition is, so once the product is selected, he'll add it to the cart. Then check out. So description for this is users can complete their purchase. And uh, here, preconditions. First, uh, users should have items in the cart. Post condition, order is placed. So once uh, the item is in the cart, he can place the order and make payment. Order history, users can view their past orders. And again, precondition, first user should log in. Then post condition, users can see the list of previous orders that he made earlier. Then second step is estimate effort for each use case. So here for user registration, uh, we are assuming that a uh, complexity metric is taken as simple. And here estimated effort per person weeks is one. That means if a, per a single person is working full time for one week, then he can complete this user registration part. And uh, brow uh, product browsing. So this is a uh, complexity ranges average. Here it is two person weeks, which indicates that one person working full time for two weeks. So here, uh, as it is a complex complexity metric is average, single person is taking two weeks to complete the second uh, part. And then add to cart, this module can be completed within two weeks. Again, single person is completing that in two weeks. Then check out, it can be done in complexity. So here the complexity metric is complex. So we are estimating that as four weeks per person. And the order history again average. So we are taking the same value too. So here total estimated effort. So we are adding all these uh, values in order to get the estimated effort. Which we got it as 11 person weeks. It indicates that one person working full time for 11 weeks in order to complete all these tasks. And step 4 is consider team size. Assume that the team consists of 4 developers instead of 1 along with a uh, project manager and QA tester. So, uh, here estimated time is total effort by team size. So, here what is the total effort which we got 11 person weeks divided, divide that by 4 developers. So, we got the value as 2.75 weeks. So, if we include 4 members in uh, completing the task, then the work can be completed within 2.75 weeks. Whereas, if only single person is working, then he take 11 person weeks for doing the same task. So, after uh, completing the time estimation, we need to assess the risk as well as contingency. So, here again contingency uh, is taken as 15 person. So, estimated time is around 3 weeks. So, 3 weeks into contingency value is 0 0.15. So, we are applying extra uh, 0 0.5 weeks for the task. So, we are estimating we need some buffer time of 0 0.5 weeks to complete the task. Then final estimate, estimated time plus contingency. So, estimated original estimated time is 3 weeks and the contingency value added to this is 0 0.5. So, we are estimating total 3.5 uh, weeks for doing the project.